Hello, Samadan here, and welcome to the Wowhead Weekly Economy Wrap-Up, where I'll go through all the gold-making news for this week, and also go through what I've been getting up to in my gold-making, or as is it the case for me at the moment, my gold spending. We'll start with that first, and then we'll move on to the blog afterwards. So here we have Samadan. Now, I said last week that I was getting more into legendaries, and basically that meant just spending, spending, and spending. We are currently looking at the last month. We were at five and a half million. We are now down to three and a half million. So a cool two million in expenses in that time. In terms of uh, sales, we have had the odd Shadowgast ring sale, 19 of them, and average price of 10,000 gold. Uh, difficult to see in terms of uh, where we're at in terms of the ledger on those because TSM doesn't track them per se. But um, we have had a few sales of the odd sort of ones that I do have at rank for. We've got, um, so let's have a look here. So yeah, braces, cape, uh, mittens and pants is the latest one I've maxed out now. So I'm working on basically trying to max out one at a time and start selling the odd rank four or rank six. So I'll probably work on, I've got one, two, the robe's going to be expensive. That's again down to my price of lightless silk at the moment. Uh, the hood's probably next in my list of things to do there. I'll do the belt last. And then jewel crafting, we have the uh, the two, the ring and the neck I've already maxed out. And I've started on one of the leather working. I think it was the bone shatter. What I ended up doing in that respect is I opened up legendary stock tracker. So what I did in terms of choosing what to go for on the leather side of things, I looked at each of these and thought, okay, well, these are a profit according to legendary stock tracker all the way up to rank 4, so that could be a potential one to go for. I went with the Unbride Vest as rank 1 to start off with, and you can see here these not scans, I haven't progressed on these yet. And the other potential one here, looking at these Bone Shatter, Pauldrons and Waste Guard, could be potential ones to level up next. In terms of maybe getting some profits out of them, you don't know. The Grim Veiled looks promising here at all these price points, but sales are very, very few and far between. I'm doing this investment now because I'm not expecting a huge amount of profits now. I'm doing this to, in the hope that um, come 9.2 there'll be more returning players and more activity on my own server in terms of getting the legendaries. Whether this risky investment pays off or not, time will tell, but I figured now's my last chance to at least try it, if nothing else. I've got the spare gold, I'm not really going to spend it on anything else at this point apart from tokens to keep up with my game time and I'm pretty confident I can get that just through regular gold making in the um, if I really need to. So that's where I'm at with legendaries obviously the usual uh, sales coming through we are currently sitting at 7,000 these kind of things are just keeping my gold from completely diminishing too much uh, I need to go through and relist everything on anyway. I haven't done a reset of my prices that I normally do at the beginning of the month where I give everyone 50,000 gold and move everything across because everyone's been spending so much in different ways and passing materials on to other people. There's not really an accurate way to track this, so I'm just literally just taking the pool of gold that I have and spending it as and where necessary. So that's the situation for me at the moment. Let's move on to the blog and have a look at the, uh, the news for this week. Now here we are, 213th edition of the Wowhead Economy blog. It's uh, really been going strong and I've really enjoyed uh, doing these articles every week. And this week in particular there's a couple of really big news items, one of which doesn't really affect gold making per se, and that's the announcement of um, cross-faction dungeoning and Mythic Plus and all that um, in 9.2.5, which is music to my ears. This is what I've always wanted in a PvE scenario. I want players to be able to choose who they play with. That's the key for me. Um, I had that way back when I played EverQuest years and years and years ago. So to be able to do that now, finally in World of Warcraft, would be great. I mean, yes, if you can open it up to uh, questing and being able to choose like faction mode on or off, same as we do with war mode, that would be the ultimate for me. I've got a feeling that might come in 10.0. We'll see how this goes, but from what I've seen, the overwhelming response has been really positive with that. So gold making aside, that is a fantastic piece of news. Uh, the other big piece of news was the change in policy for um, boosting. Now, this caused quite a bit of a stir and needed some clarification. 
I've got a link to the original one as described by Blizzard here. Um, there's a couple of excerpts that I um, have uh, taken out here. One here was the clarifications. So the, basically what they're trying to clamp down on is organisations who disruptively advertise across all realms and establish SQL services um, are the primary target of this policy update. So basically they're saying yes, guilds and individuals who are inviting players from other realms to join them in traditional game activities in exchange for gold are allowed and as they were before. But this strikes me a lot of what happened with multiboxing. With multiboxing they said um, use of software is not allowed multiboxing itself is allowed and there may be a player-led ban wave in for want of a better word in terms of um, anyone seeing this kind of activity might clap, want to clap down on it themselves i don't know whether this is going to happen with regards to boosting because um, maybe it's a bit of a fairer system so that was one of the concerns and then the other side of things is all this gold that has been moving around uh, different realms what's going to happen to that this was a fairly big scale uh, operation. I mean, uh, we covered it before, um, way back in April last year. Um, Jack and uh, Zanzifal did the uh, Auction House podcast um, interview with the booster. And you could see just quite how big these these communities were. Now, what's going to happen here? I don't know. What's going to happen to all the gold? And will it affect gold making in general in terms of... Okay, so what's going to happen with those that were using the gold that they made through boosting to um, buy things like Transmog or things like that that we're trying to sell as regular gold makers? Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I have a feeling that's probably not going to affect day-to-day -day gold making with professions and farming and what have you because there's always going to be the, the casual player base, the, um, the collectors that aren't involved in the boosting side of things. I mean, I myself have never been involved in boosting. I've never boosted or been a boostee. Um, so as myself, as a sample size of one, it's not very scientific, I know, but um, I can say that it's not really going to affect me in any way, but it may affect people who are my customers. Uh, this was discussed on the, the Reddit, as always, and so uh, there's a few responses I've included here. Uh, Chaotic Neutral uh, was worried about sort of the faction imbalance and things on uh, lower population servers. What with the announcement of 9.2.5, I don't think this is necessarily going to be a problem. Uh, the concern here is one of the unintended side effects um, of people taking it upon themselves to just report in mass people that are advertising in trade chat, even if they are following the new rules. So this was my concern, a bit like with the multiboxing. I'm not sure how this is going to be treated. I mean, obviously, yes, um, less trade chat spam is always nice. I mean, I don't use it myself, but I know a lot of people do. Perhaps one of the reasons I have avoided it is because of uh, all the spam in there. But then you tend to get a lot of spam anyway. Uh, and here we have, uh, much like we had a friend experience harassment simply because there were duo boxing in the world uh, with gathering after the changes to multiboxing. This is this is where my concern lies. Um, is there going to be a blanket player-led targeting of um, people that they deem to be breaking the rules? Um, I don't know. There is a concern that all this kind of thing will go underground and... Um, It'll be moved away from the game and all the transactions will happen outside of the game, which obviously leads to further uh, discrepancies with real money transactions and stuff like that. So something that they're probably aware of, but I think the main thing here is trying to get it out of trade chat it seemed to be Blizzard's main focus. Uh, Dirty Irby uh, feels that it's been coming for a while, but like the trade chat spam was overwhelming and the player base was getting sick of it. Um, that being said, individual guilds still be running boosts, especially the top guilds that need the funding to bankroll the next tier. This I can imagine being a thing uh, probably a bit more a bit more feasible by the, the big guilds, perhaps the uh, the big guilds on each particular server will at least be able to say, okay, well, we're a big rept reputable guild. Um, you can come through us, we'll invite you in and uh, we'll take you through. And that's probably done on a player by player basis with less of the advertising. Um, Aaron Instancy is talking about um, impact escrow communities, about things like the black market auction house, which I believe, according to the Blizzard's um, clarification, um, this is that includes um, everything. So it's specifically said here. So I imagine we'll see perhaps some good deals on the black market auction house um, because that was a, a thing as well. So in general, the consensus does seem to be that removing the trade spam is a good thing. 
if individuals and or guilds can still do boosting themselves and still and still allow the gold to flow between those players, then I think that I can see as a good thing. Um, genuine concern that operation will move more underground and off-site, which could lead to further concerns of RMT being involved. Um, we'll see what we we'll see what happens with that. Uh, in general, I see what they're trying to do. They did say, you know, to further our goal of making the gameplay experience as fair and welcoming as possible. So that's the focus, really. You know, they want. They want people to enjoy the game overall, and if things like this are starting to impact on other players' enjoyment of the game, then I can see Blizzard taking a hard line and saying, okay, well, well, none of that, we're going to do it this way. This does raise an interesting uh, question on my point, I mean, in terms of fair and welcoming, will that go across to other things, like, say, we use uh, Trade Skill Master? Do other people consider that unfair? I mean, it is available to all, and I, as a... Uh, as a content creator trying to make it as accessible to all um, but then you can go another step and say well what about other add-ons what about we cores what about dbm or all of the things that make our lives easier is that a fair and way to play the game do we all go default ui with no add-ons i don't think, really don't think that's i'm not suggesting that in the slightest and i don't think that's going to happen but it does it does raise the question i mean obviously i can see i can see this as you know the focus and i'm all for that and i think that is part of our responsibility as players as well as blizzard's responsibility is trying to engineer the game and setting aside rules so that um so that most people have a good experience with the game and following up from that mantheus has a great video just going through his opinions uh, on the matter so it goes through a lot of we talk a lot of what we talked about here but also what it is and what it isn't um so if you want that in video format i highly recommend it giving that video a watch as well. So that was the main news uh, this week, the the one particularly in this case uh, to do with gold making. Now another thing that crept in on the notes on uh, the PTR which a lot of people wouldn't have noticed but us gold makers definitely noticed and that's the skinning changes on the PTR. On the developer notes this was very very interesting to see. So many skinnable, mineable and gatherable enemies can now be skinned, mined and gathered by all the players who engage with the enemy and have the correct gathering skill. So in order to make skinning, and that includes mining and herb gathering from enemies, particularly enemies here, um, a more group friendly experience. So this is, this is the thing here, a more group friendly experience. We've adjusted the skinning rules. Majority of skinning enemies will now uh, follow the normal tapping rules and be skinned by everyone who engaged with them and has the ability to skin them. Uh, some weak and furry specific enemies will still only be skinned once. Maybe that is something to do with stopping things being mass skinned. Um, we'll, we'll learn more about that as time goes on. And um, would the rare and powerful ones be skinnable by everyone who engages them? So that's definitely, I can see, a good thing rather than picking just one person to be able to skin. So I think that's a good thing overall. But we don't know exactly how this is going to be implemented because um, the question arises here, uh, depending on how this works in practice. So the first question here is, will you still be able to skin a mob even if you haven't uh, done the actual uh, normal tapping rules? Because what happens quite often is I'll be running around, say, Corthia, and people will be doing world quests where loads of the uh, beasts have been killed, and nobody has bothered to skin them. And I can come along and I can skin the mobs afterwards. The question raises here is, is that still going to be possible? Or maybe is it going to be possible after a certain amount of time? So that would be one of the things that might balance or imbalance the system. And then the other thing is, okay, what's going to happen? Are we going to have suddenly more two by four groups like, like we had during B in BFA where uh, that was really in its peak? Uh, it still happens now, of course, um, but is this going to be something that happens where everyone can skin? Uh, and that, if that is the case, and it's with uh, mobs that can be hyper-spawned, then we're going to see a huge influx of materials, which obviously will affect the markets. So we don't know fully how this is going to work in terms of uh, the market changes. If it's only specific rare mobs, uh, then it won't be a big deal and make sense. If it's enemies with sufficient respawn times, it's going to be the same exact problem as created by herbing and mining. It's going to make multiboxing more efficient by leaps and bounds, even without any multiboxing software, which is going to be an issue here. Uh, Want to buy gold also raised. Um, it's a good change, obviously, but um, 
in terms of enemy placements and things like that, um, we have about 10 to 20 times as much leather on the auction house, which could be a real thing. Although, um, as the big chunker says here, it may not affect the prices too drastically because the prices are tied to vendor shuffles. Both desert leather and pallid bones, then heavy desert leather is tied directly to the price of desert leather through the leather working as well. So maybe the prices won't hit that. Maybe you will see a resurgence of vendor shuffles. I know Blizzard is really not keen on those, and this could be a loophole that has now been exposed. Um, so maybe with these new rules we'll get more 2x4 farms, maybe with these rules with so many more materials we'll get more vendor shuffles, and then maybe Blizzard will do something to change that again further. We don't know yet, but that could be, in theory, a way that this pans out. So I don't know uh, fully in terms of the markets. Obviously there's going to be a high demand for materials um, come 9.2 with all the leatherworking legendaries. So hopefully the, the increased supply will be outstripped by the demand of the legendaries. We'll have to see. I mean, when Corthia um, first came out, uh, there were loads of animals that we could skin and the mats were abundant. At the same time, leather legendaries weren't as popular because we had the cloth the cloak and the rings were one of the ones that was um, more favoured because of the way domination sockets were. So how this will rebalance in Zareth Mortis uh, remains to be seen. Uh, we'll see um, in terms of like how many animal mobs there are, how many 2x4 farms uh, might be available, and we'll just see how, how much the auction house uh, shifts and changes. Uh, I still think leather will be used quite a lot, so I'm not too concerned personally about the leather working prices. Maybe some people are dumping their materials now in anticipation and you could pick up a bargain. And in terms of video format, uh, Student Albatross has a great video here just going through his uh, reaction on the matter. He's really in favor of it, obviously, because he does a lot of two by four farms on his streams. So I could see this being like, as Blizzard said here, um, a more group friendly experience. So if you've got individuals coming together and doing these farms, then absolutely great. This is a way to make gold whether it encourages more people to go the multi-boxing route and then try and dominate a market by having huge amounts of things or maybe even going the vendor shuffling route. I can't see Blizzard being very happy about that kind of route. So there's going to be some tweaking, I'm sure, um, in time to come. One of the other things that was on the PTR that Vardis pointed out on uh, Twitter this week was a confirmation box for unique equipped items. So uh, just to let you know that uh, if you're buying an item that's unique equipped, um, you get a little confirmation box. So that's a nice little quality of life improvement, I think, uh, just to avoid the confusion, especially because we'll still have these um, with the new gear coming in 9.2 uh, with the unique equipped in the, in the crafters marks of the Eternal. So still lots of uh, interesting things coming up in 9.2. It's going to shift and change the markets. i got a feeling I'm going to see a lot of people returning um, with both 9.2 and in the future when 9.2.5 comes out with the, with the cross-faction partying up and everything. So interesting times ahead. Um, there's going to be a shift in markets, certainly. Whatever we can do to make gold, I'll be keeping on top of it, as, we, as always, here on the Wild Economy blog. One final thing is uh, DalloGG has been updating the Worth It Guides add-on. So this isn't necessarily uh, updates that are particular to gold making, but um, this does include um, a guide for levelling every profession and expansion. It also now has guides for gaining reputation and also collecting mounts, which is really nice for the collectors among us. So this isn't necessarily all gold making improvements, but uh, gaining reputation, as we know, will be needed for recipes anyway. So if you're going that route and using something like all the things, highly recommend getting hold of this add-on as well as all the things, and then you'll never be bored in WoW again. It's always something to do when you're going for these big collections. So that pretty much wraps up the blog for this week. I hope you found that enjoyable. Um, there's a bit of something for everyone. Uh, a lot of this stuff we just don't know how it's going to work out in the markets with the skinning and the boosting bands. So uh, time will tell, certainly. So that's it from me for gold making this week. Good luck if you are getting into legendaries for the first time or expanding on your empire or doing something completely un-legendary related like commission tables or things like that. Whatever you're doing to make gold. Happy gold making and I'll see you very soon.